known Buffalo as an opponent twice a year, most of your career. When you're not playing them, how much do the Bills mean to your family? I uh, definitely. The Bills do mean a lot to my family and I. I mean, we grew up in Buffalo, 25 minutes from the stadium. I was a big Bills fan growing up. You know, the, the Keo Spikes, Eric Moulds, the Jim Kelly era. And uh, just, you know, whenever I was in the backyard playing football with my friends, with my brothers and I, we, you know, you line up out wide, you're always pretending you were, you know, the receiver that they had. Um, if I was Moulds, that was, that was always my favorite player. Or if you make a stop you, or a big hit, you're acting like you're Takeo Spike. So, um, you know, the, the history of, you know, of the Buffalo Bills just goes way back with my family and, family and I from just playing in the backyard to watching the games. We already knew the Bills tried to pry Gronk away from Brady last year, and Gronk considered it even after coming off a championship. Now with Brady retired, it seems like they got a good shot this time around. According to The Athletic, the Bills are hoping that Gronk will come home to Western New York and play in front of his family as he pursues another ring with a championship contender. As part of the report, one cap analyst said, There's a sense that a one-year $5 million base contract with somewhere around $5 million of incentives added could be a strong fit for the Bills. That's lower risk up front as they assess what kind of role Gronk would play over the course of 17 plus weeks, and they'll be happy to add on bonus pay if things go swimmingly. When Dalton Schultz is projected to be paid at least 12 million and Mike Kosicki at least 11 million, I'd say Gronk at that number is a pretty, pretty good deal. It's worth mentioning that the Bills are actually the betting favorite to land Gronk over even the Buccaneers. I know Bills fans hate Gronk more than any other fan base after the whole Tredavious White cheap shot back in 2017. They have a right to hold that grudge and I'd say it's totally understandable, but Gronk at least did apologize immediately after the game. The Athletic says that White accepted the apology and Sean McDermott said he knows Gronk is a better person than what happened that day. I'd say he's right. It was the only time I can even remember Gronk doing anything close to that. Just an unfortunate and uncharacteristic dirty hit that both sides have since moved on from. I'm sure the Bills for an office would at least ask for White's opinion before a move like this so they don't cause any ripples in the locker room chemistry and he must have signed off on it last year. So here they go again, and this time they should have a much better shot. Also, something tells me Gronk wouldn't mind scoring a few TDs on Belichick's defense after Belichick once tried to ship him out to the Lions. Maybe Bills fans should think of that before they leave all the angry comments I know we're about to see. I also know there are always injury concerns when it comes to Gronk. He's only played 16 games in a season three times in his career, with two of those being in his first couple years in the league. But I guess on the positive side, the year after his retirement stint at the age of 31, he was able to play a fully healthy season that of course culminated in a two-touchdown performance in the Super Bowl. That's really where the Bills should hope Gronk will put them over the top. He's consistently produced in the biggest games of his career. Yes, he had Tom Brady throwing to him, but he was Brady's go-to most of the time when games were on the line. I'm thinking not just Super Bowl 55, but also game-changing plays in Super Bowl 49, the 2018 AFC Championship, and Super Bowl 53. Even in games where the Patriots lost, like the 2015 AFC Championship and Super Bowl 52, Gronk was still on another level. I mean, even in his final game last year, he still had 85 yards. And last year as a whole, he put up over 800 yards and six touchdowns in 12 games. I'd go as far to say that he looked better this year as a whole than he did in his first year with the Bucks. Even if he does miss some games due to injury, he's always been more than worth it because in the end you just hope he's healthy when the games matter the most. I mean this guy is second in all-time postseason touchdowns to only Jerry Rice and I'm sure Josh Allen could help him inch closer to Rice or at least cement his position in second for some time because Rice will be near impossible to catch. 
Now, Dawson Knox had a breakout year last year, and even then he had 587 yards in 15 games. So even if we account for Gronk's age with a below average year for his standards, it's still better than most tight ends in the league. And besides, Knox will be entering his prime now, so the idea of a Bills two tight end offense with those two, along with Stefan Diggs and Cole Beasley, could just about to become the best offense in football, with Josh Allen looking the way he did in last year's playoffs. On top of that, Gronk, it seems, will always be one of the best blocking tight ends in the league. So you could argue that would free up Knox quite a bit if they have Gronk blocking on certain plays. And the Bills could use a little more balance on offense at times, so more quality blocking in the run game always helps. And I know Brian Dable is gone, but that's his offense the Bills are running. And Gronk will be very familiar with how the Bills like their tight ends to do things, as Dable was his tight end coach for several years right in the middle of his career. So if it's just a one year championship chase deal, then Gronk should be able to quickly adjust and make an impact right away. Plus if Brandon Bean wants to help out new offensive coordinator Ken Dorsey, then what's better than a shiny new toy for your franchise quarterback to throw to? Josh Allen was probably on his way to getting an MVP soon enough, but if you give him another quality weapon that helps the offense multidimensionally, then well, that MVP award might come sooner rather than later. The Bills will no doubt have some competition from other contenders for Gronk, especially in the AFC like the Bengals, who have plenty of cap space and have already heard Gronk point out Joe Burrow as a quarterback he'd like to play with after Brady. So I guess you could almost look at it as an extra cherry on top for the Bills if they can keep Gronk away from an opponent that they could potentially meet in next year's playoffs. I realize there are some bigger needs than tight end in Buffalo. They obviously need to solidify who's going to be playing opposite White in the future and re-signing Harrison Phillips would be a good start as well. They could also go D-tackle round one in the draft and it'd probably be a good idea to add some reinforcements in the interior O-line. No matter what, they'll still be one of the most balanced teams offensively and defensively in the league. My point is they have the luxury of being able to add a weapon like Gronk even if they already have a promising tight end. All in all, I'm just imagining this scenario where the Bills finally break their curse and they're hosting a championship winning parade. And here's Gronk jumping off trucks and smashing 200 tables, then probably hurting his back and calling it a career. But hey, if you're going to go out, then that would be the way to do it. And I was like, oh, no, I'm retired. How can you train me? <laughs> and I stayed on the Patriots. <laughs> <laughs>